Hi all, welcome to Andrea M. D'Souza's Kitchen. Today I'm going to prepare for you yet another Goan delicacy. One of the most famous and mouth-watering dishes and that is mackerels or bangdas stuffed with Goan rechar or rechado masala. I'll first prepare the masala and then I'll go on to stuff the bangdas. Now there are two ways. One is stuffed plain with the rechar masala and the other one with an onion tomato filling. You can try either or you can try both and I'm sure you will definitely enjoy whatever you try. So here's a recipe just for all of you who've asked for it. I'll begin by taking around 30 to 32 Kashmiri chilies. Now as you can see these Kashmiri chilies that I have are rather big. So I'm going to break each chili into 3 to 4 small pieces. To that I'm going to add around 12 or 13 big cloves or 18 to 20 small cloves of garlic. As, as you can see, the cloves of garlic I am using are rather small. So I have used 18 to 20 small pieces. To that I will add 1 inch of ginger chopped and half a teaspoon of jeera along with around 40 corns of pepper. You can also use 35 corns if you think it gets too spicy. Then take around 10 to 12 cloves or lavang and 2 inches of cinnamon. Now, now I am going to take 1 cup of goa vinegar. I won't add the entire thing right now to these chilies. I'm just going to add around 3 fourth of the cup and let it soak for a while. If you don't have goa vinegar, then you can also use red wine vinegar. But preferably if you have goa vinegar, nothing to beat that taste in your rechado masala. I'm going to mix all this and I'm going to keep it aside for around 2 or 3 hours. The longer you keep it aside, the better it is. Just occasionally in between, take a spoon and just mix it around a bit. And it's preferable that you use a glass bowl because whenever you have lime or vinegar and if you're keeping it for a long time, then glass is the best option. Now while that is kept aside, I'm going to take a very small onion and keep it directly over the gas flame. And I'm going to let it burn for a while, at least around 5 minutes. I want it to be nice and soft. Now after 5 minutes, when you see it nicely burnt, let it keep, keep it aside and let it cool down for a while. And after it cools down, you remove the outer covering and the ash and throw it away. And then when you cut the onion, you will notice it's a kind of a pinkish, softish, tender color. And that is when you will cut it into small bits and we will add it later on to our masala. See, this seems done. So I'm going to remove it now. And this is what it will look like. Now, suppose you don't want to use it directly over the gas flame, then you can use around one teaspoon of oil and fry the onion as you would normally do for the other masalas. I'll now take the chilies and other things that I had soaked in vinegar along with my onions and add them to a mixer. To that, I'll put around quarter teaspoon of salt. If you want to put more, you can put more, but I prefer so much. And around one and a half teaspoon of sugar. I will also add around 2 tablespoons or 3 tablespoons of cashew feni. Now that is optional. Since I had it at home, I used it. And if you don't have it, then it is fine. And I'm going to let it grind. I will also add the remaining quarter cup of vinegar that I had kept aside earlier. In case you think you need more vinegar, you can add that too, depending upon the consistency of your masala. You need it a little thin. And oh yes, I've also forgot to add around quarter teaspoon of haldi. So add that too and grind it again. Now as I see here, look at it. It still needs to be ground more and I think I need a little more vinegar. So I will add at least another 2 or 3 tablespoons to get this consistency. Now that's my rechar masala. It's done. It looks amazing, doesn't it? And it smells even more better in my kitchen right now. So I'm going to remove it out into a bowl. Just what I need. The remaining, whatever remains, I can keep it in the fridge and store it and use it the next time. And one more thing I forgot to add. For this rechar masala, use only vinegar to grind it. Do not add any water at all. Now for the bangdas, I've got around 7 small bangdas. I would have preferred a little bigger ones, but that's what I got in the market. So I'm going to add around a tablespoon of salt. Uh, before that, I've washed it really well and cleaned it. And then I've added salt, mixed it everywhere. And I'm going to keep it aside for an hour or so. There are two ways that we stuff our bangdas. First is that for around four bangdas, I would take around half an onion and cut it very fine. And to that, I will also add around one very finely cut chilli and either half a big tomato chopped fine or maybe uh, one small tomato. 
I am going to add around two tablespoons of rechar masala. Now this depends on you. All depends on your taste. You can add more. You can add less. So I am going to mix it all up. And I prefer using my hands because you need to really crush that tomato and onion well. So use your hands. Crush it really well. And uh, then we can use it to stuff our bangdas. If you think you need more salt, then you can add around a quarter teaspoon more. I have not added because we really don't use too much salt. Now this is what our stuffing will finally look like. It looks appetizing, doesn't it? I'll start stuffing in these bangdas. Now these bangdas have been slit in the center and I'm going to fill in the stuffing here. Now since I'm using one hand for the camera and one hand to cook, it is a little difficult. So I'm going to keep that camera aside and use both my hands so you will not see the process. And then I will use a string and tie up these bangdas. In the same manner, I'm going to stuff all my four bangdas. For the remaining three bangdas, I'm only going to put plain rechar masala, no onion tomato stuffing. This is another way that you can stuff them. Uh, do not put too much of masala because then it will be too heavy to eat. So just a little bit is more than enough. And you don't need to use a string here because the masala sticks by itself. So it will not open up. Okay, now all my seven bangdas are stuffed nicely. So I'm going to start frying them. I'll simultaneously use two pans. I've put around uh, say one and a half big cooking spoon of oil in the pan which has got four bangdas and the other pan I'm going to put one spoon cooking spoon. When the oil is nice and hot, I'm going to reduce the flame to medium and start keeping these bangdas. So this is a pan that has all my onion tomatoes stuffed with rechar masala. And in the next pan, I'm going to put the plain rechar masala stuffed bangdas. Don't keep the flame too high nor too low. It has to be medium and be around the gas itself. That is the bangdas to keep an eye on them. You can't leave them and go away. Otherwise, they'll either get too burnt or they'll be undercooked. We want them just right and crisp. Okay, now this is what it looks like when it is turned. This is the first time that I have turned it. The skin has become a bit crispy. You can see that here. For a few minutes, you can increase the flame to high. But make sure you're standing in front of your pans because you don't want things to burn. And keep alternating between a high and a low flame so that the bangdas are nice and crispy. My kitchen is smelling absolutely amazing right now. But I think my fish is done. So I'm going to switch off the flame and start removing these out. This is what they will look like. Nice and crispy and well fried on both sides. There you go. They can be enjoyed plain or with rice and fish curry and pao. Anything of your choice. So I'm sure you will try it out and enjoy it as much as we did. And when you do try it out, don't forget to send me pictures of the food you've cooked as well as your feedback and comments that you send. Um, here are the links that you can contact me. And here's the ingredients just for you. Enjoy yourself and do not forget to like my video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Have a great day ahead.